movies in short here. Today, I'll summarize a 2014 psychological, music drama movie called Whiplash. Actor Miles Teller performed most of the drumming in this movie himself. Sit back, relax and enjoy. Andrew Naiman is a drum student at Schaefer Conservatory of Music in New York. He stops practicing when the studio band leader, Terence Fletcher, walks through the door towards him. Andrew politely introduces himself, telling Fletcher that he is a first-year student. Fletcher asks Andrew why he stopped playing when he is aware that Fletcher is looking for studio band players. Andrew starts to play again briefly to show his ability. Fletcher sarcastically says that Andrew's response to his question is to start playing again like a wind-up monkey. He tells him to continue and leaves the room. Later, Andrew meets his father Jim Naiman at the movies and tells him that his meeting with Fletcher wasn't great, the next day at class, Andrew meets the core drummer, Ryan Connolly. Before he leaves, Andrew peers into Fletcher's class next door to watch the studio band. Andrew practices, hoping to become one of the world's greatest jazz drummers, taking inspiration from the legendary Buddy Rich. Fletcher walks into their band practice and instructs Ryan to play. He tells Andrew and Ryan to swap seats and listens briefly to Andrew. Fletcher calls Andrew, telling him to be in room B16 the following morning at 6 a.m. and not to be late. Andrew takes his seat back at the drums next to Ryan and smiles to himself. He goes to meet Nicole, who works at the cinema, and asks her to go out with him. She agrees. The next morning Andrew wakes up after 6 and rushes to get dressed, as he is already late. When he arrives at the studio no one is there. He checks the notice and sees that the class only starts at 9 a.m. Andrew sits at the drum kit and waits for three hours, the other musicians arrive just before 9 a.m. and unpack their instruments. An arrogant Carl Tanner, the core drummer, meets Andrew and tells him to set the drums and to turn his music pages for him as he plays. Fletcher arrives at exactly 9 a.m. The musicians stand in silence waiting for instruction. He walks to the podium and selects a piece for them to play. Fletcher introduces Andrew to the studio band as a squeaker as he is only 19 years old and says isn't he cute. The band starts to play Whiplash and Tanner shouts Page to Andrew who has forgotten to turn the sheet music for Tanner as he plays. Fletcher orders the band to stop, saying he is really upset that there is an out-of-tune player. He approaches a student named Metz, saying tell me it's not you Elmer Fudd. A very nervous Metz starts to play again. Fletcher stares at him and asks if he thinks he is out of tune. When Metz looks down at the floor, Fletcher says there's no Mars bar down there so what are you looking at? He orders Metz to look at him. A tearful, embarrassed Metz confesses that he was playing out of tune. Fletcher explodes with rage asking him why he didn't just say so. He tells Metz that he has carried him for long enough and that Metz will not lose them the competition because his mind is elsewhere, instead of on pitch. Fletcher continues to insult and intimidate him and tells him to get out of the class. Fletcher tells the class that Metz wasn't actually out of tune, Erickson was. But the fact that Metz didn't know was bad enough. During a break, Fletcher speaks to Andrew and asks him about his family. Andrew says his father is a writer, but teaches in high school. Andrew's mother left home when he was a baby so he doesn't know what she does. He says that he is not from a family of musicians. Fletcher tells him he needs to listen to the great drummers like Buddy Rich and Gil Jones. Andrew returns to class feeling more confident and relaxed as he takes his place as core drummer, with Tanner as alternate drummer. Fletcher conducts as the band plays Whiplash. Fletcher stops Andrew repeatedly, becoming increasingly angry as he paces around the room, telling him to start over as Andrew fails to keep tempo. Andrew ducks just in time as Fletcher turns and throws a chair at him. Fletcher approaches Andrew very aggressively, shouting at Andrew to look at him and to count to tempo in four. Fletcher slaps Andrew's face at each count, while repeatedly asking him if he is playing out of tempo too quickly or too slowly. When Andrew eventually replies that he is playing too quickly, Fletcher continues his relentless tirade, threatening him and telling him not to sabotage his band. He shows Andrew the music sheet, asking him if he can read tempo or even music, and makes more disparaging remarks. An emotionally exhausted Andrew chokes back his tears. A single tear runs down his cheek as Fletcher continues to reprimand him. Fletcher demands that Andrew shout I'm upset loudly so that the band can hear him in order to degrade him further in front of his peers. He belittles Andrew's family, using the information Andrew had told him earlier. Tanner moves back to his place as core drummer, with Andrew beside him, and the band starts to play Whiplash again. Later, an exhausted and demoralized Andrew sits alone in his room. He makes the decision to continue, printing copies of the sheet music before he starts to practice again. Andrew practices for hours until his hands bleed and the blood drips onto the drums.
Nicole meets him later for pizza, and they share stories of their lives. The studio band tunes their instruments preparing for the Overbrook jazz competition. Fletcher continues to be verbally abusive as he gives the musicians last-minute instructions before they go on stage. The band are introduced as they assemble in front of the judges and Fletcher joins them. Fletcher seems to approve of their performance. Afterwards, Tanner hands Andrew the folder with the sheet music for the second set for safekeeping. Andrew places the folder on a chair as he buys a soda from the vending machine. Tanner returns and asks for the sheet music. When Andrew turns to retrieve it, the folder has been removed from the chair. They return backstage to inform Fletcher. He tells them to get their drumsticks and get on stage. Tanner relies on the sheet music and cannot play from memory. Andrew steps in saying he has memorized the song Whiplash. The band returns to the stage for the second set, with Andrew as core drummer. He plays flawlessly and Schaefer Conservatory wins the competition. The following day at the studio, Tanner is demoted as core drummer with Andrew taking his place. At a family dinner that evening, Andrew mentions proudly that he is now a core member of the studio band and that Fletcher's opinion matters a lot to him. After band practice, Fletcher discusses a double-time swing tempo with Andrew, saying he will give another drummer he met in the practice room a shot at it. Andrew is surprised to see Ryan Connolly arrive to try out for the position for the upcoming competition. Fletcher pits the two drummers against each other, dismissing Andrew for playing the wrong tempo. He tells Connolly he is the new core drummer. Andrew follows Fletcher into the office and disagrees that Connolly is a better choice. Fletcher tells him that if he wants the part he must earn it. Nicole meets Andrew who tells her they need to break off their relationship as it will hinder his progress. She says he hardly has time for her anyway and walks away. He goes back to practice on the song Caravan with a pitcher of iced water beside him. When he fails to reach the correct tempo he punches the drum in frustration. Andrew plunges his bleeding hand into the iced water and then continues, venting his frustration and anger as he plays. Later, when the band meets for practice, Fletcher asks them to listen to the music of a past student who had started at Schaefer with a lot of hope. He says that he saw the drive and potential in a student named Sean Casey who persevered against the odds and was eventually made first trumpet at Lincoln Center. Fletcher tearfully tells the students that Sean died in a car accident yesterday. They rehearse Caravan but Ryan Connolly struggles with the tempo. Andrew is told to try and earn the part, also failing to please Fletcher. Tanner is recalled to try out and also fails. Connolly is told to get back on the drums. Fletcher tells them that they will have to keep playing until one of them succeeds. Andrew is belittled and verbally abused as he plays. Fletcher continues to push the drummers to their limits to regain their position as core drummer. He insults their abilities continually as they fail to play to tempo. Fletcher throws a drum and kicks furniture as he circles around Andrew, relentlessly shouting at him to play faster. Andrew continues to play and rises above the pain as his hands start to bleed. Fletcher finally tells him he has earned the part and to clean the blood off his drum set. The other band musicians wait in the corridor for hours, finally returning to continue the rehearsal. They are released from the exhausting practice at 2 in the morning. Andrew reads the sheet music as he travels on the bus to the Dunellen Jazz Competition. The bus has a flat tire en route and there are no taxis available. He hires a car and, in his rush, he forgets his drumsticks on the chair in the office. Andrew is late to join the practice and an irate Fletcher sarcastically thanks him for fitting them into his busy schedule. Fletcher launches into another insulting tirade, telling him he lost the part, further enraging an already angry Andrew. He tells Fletcher he earned his place. Fletcher snarls that the only reason he is a core drummer is because he misplaced Tanner's folder and that the position is lent to him, not owned by him. Connolly watches smugly, telling Andrew to back off when he shouts that he is in the studio band because he is the best player. Fletcher insults his father and threatens Andrew saying that they're on stage in 11 minutes and Andrew must be seated, with his drumsticks, ready to play. He drives back to the car rental office and retrieves the drumsticks, calling to say he is on his way back. As he feeds back, his car is hit by a truck. Andrew is injured and bleeding as he crawls from the wreckage, telling a concerned bystander that he is okay. He reaches into the car for his drumsticks before he runs back to the band practice. He finally walks on stage and takes his seat at the drums. Andrew summons his strength, determined to play through the pain. He perseveres until his injured hand drops the drumstick onto the floor. As he reaches to pick it up, the band continues to play and Fletcher approaches him. He struggles but forces himself to continue. As Andrew collapses, Fletcher coldly tells him he is done and apologizes to the audience. Andrew is enraged and finally snaps. He kicks the drum away before he runs across the stage to attack Fletcher. 
Tanner and Connolly drag Andrew off the stage, and he continues to swear at Fletcher. Andrew is expelled and his father files an ethics complaint against Schaefer Conservatory. The lawyer tells him that one of Fletcher's former students, Sean Casey, hanged himself. Fletcher had told the studio band that Sean had died in a car accident. Sean's depression and anxiety had started during his time as Fletcher's student. His family wants to make sure that Fletcher is never allowed to bully another student. The lawyer assures Andrew that Fletcher would never know that he had testified against him. Andrew is so demoralized that he decides to give up his childhood dreams of becoming a famous drummer. He throws his CDs and music sheets away and dismantles his drum kit. He agrees to testify as an anonymous witness and Fletcher is fired. Months later he goes into a jazz club where Fletcher is the special guest musician on piano. As Andrew leaves the club, Fletcher calls him and invites him for a drink. Fletcher tells him that he will be conducting a professional band opening in the upcoming JDC Fest. He says that he wasn't at Schaefer only to conduct, but also to push the students beyond what was expected of them to attain excellence. In Fletcher's opinion there are no two words in the English language more harmful than good job to praise mediocrity. Andrew asks if there isn't a tipping point where the next legendary musician could be discouraged by a tyrannical instructor. Fletcher invites Andrew to play in his band at the JDC Festival. He is using the Schaefer Studio Band playlist and needs a drummer familiar with it. When Andrew suggests Ryan Connolly, Fletcher tells him Connolly was just a tool to push Andrew to perform at his best. Tanner got discouraged and left the band. Andrew accepts the invitation to play. He calls Nicole and apologizes to her before inviting her to the JDC festival. She declines as she is in a new relationship. At the festival, Fletcher tells the band that this performance could change their lives. If an influential person in the music industry was impressed by their talent they could go far. He says that on the other hand, if anyone makes a mistake they should consider another career as the people in the music industry never forget. On stage, Andrew checks his whiplash music notes while nervously wiping his sweaty palms on his trouser leg. Fletcher approaches him and tells Andrew he knows it was him who testified against him. He introduces the band to the audience as some of the best musicians in New York saying that they will start with a new tune called Upswinging. He turns to smirk at a shocked Andrew who has not been given the sheet music for the song. The band members glare at Andrew as he tries and fails to play a song he is not familiar with. Fletcher approaches him and says maybe you just don't have it. Andrew is humiliated and leaves the stage as Fletcher smiles cruelly. His father is in the audience and walks out to find Andrew and console him. Andrew decides to return to the stage to play instead of giving up. Fletcher turns around to see Andrew seated back at the drum kit. When he addresses the audience, Andrew interrupts him by launching into the song caravan. Andrew cues the band and they start to play. A very surprised and angry Fletcher conducts. Fletcher watches Andrew intently with a grudging respect for his tenacity. At the end of the song, the lights dim and Fletcher is ready to take a bow. Andrew continues to play a breathtaking solo and Fletcher asks him what he is doing. He tells Fletcher that he'll cue him in. His hands start to bleed and his sweat drips onto the cymbals as he plays. Andrew's father watches in awe at his son's brilliant performance. Fletcher approaches Andrew as he finally recognizes the enormity of his talent. He guides Andrew as he increases the tempo. Fletcher looks Andrew in the eye and smiles, acknowledging his magnificent solo as he cues in the band for the finale. Thanks for watching, if you've enjoyed the video and want to see more, please consider subscribing and turning on the notification bell, it helps a lot. Thanks and see you again very soon.